that's a that's the day you're a big event at the church yeah that's a wonderful place the church sure. they get so many good things going there i'm glad you got this whole all day conference and um welcome welcome very very much to conversation a pleasure to welcome to the program uh franz verhagen a phd and a couple of other degrees that we can talk to a do doctor of divinity or master of divinity and so forth and he's a an ecologist who's been so for a very long period of time and he's uh in association with the Earth Charter movement, and in the, in association with that, they're set up a conference that's going to be held here on, cl on climate, uh, war cli you know, global climate warming and that kind of thing. And uh, we're going to be talking about that and other matters. Franz, so well, it's so good to see you again. Welcome very, very much. Happy to be here, uh, Harold. That's a <coughs> distinguished name, Franz Verhagen. I think it bespeaks Dutch. That's surely Dutch. A proud country and one that we're happy to to welcome you to the program. Maybe we can share a little bit of your background. We'd like to do that here. <coughs> Born and raised, little educated. And then we want to talk about Gaia. We want to talk about the Earth, you know, warming and that sort of thing. But share your own background, please, if you would. Yeah, so presently, I'm a sustainability sociologist. Okay. And that came out of my environmental concerns in the 70s and the 80s. And that came also again back into my uh, earlier training as a, uh, as a missionary priest mm -hmm. of, a Dutch so of a Dutch missionary organization. Okay. And so I was trained to go to Africa, and so I was an African. Mm -hmm. And of course, once you are uh, for a long time in Africa, in a third world nation or culture, you really start uh, changing quite a lot. And so that was my uh, early beginnings. And as you already mentioned, um, being Dutch born, I, um, have, um, I consider myself having three cultures. Okay. The Dutch one or the European one, mm -hmm. the, uh, the African one, and the American one. That's and a so good combination, yes. Yeah, huh? so yeah. it's kind of synthesis. Mm -hmm. of and then also at the same time, you mentioned about my uh, PhD, which is an applied sociology. So I got it at the end of the 70s at Columbia, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly concentrating on uh, energy. Okay. Then mm -hmm. energy and environment, which I taught at, uh, at Cooper Union. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it evolved into the uh, sustainability, which of course, is different from environmental uh, studies mm -hmm. or environmentalism because it really integrates mm -hmm. environment, social, and economic factors. Uh, yeah, I see, yeah. And you've been in that tract, as it were, for quite a while. You began as a man of the cloth. That's I correct. I hadn't realized that. That's interesting. Okay. And, uh, and you were many years, did you say, in Africa? Uh, no, I was uh, twelve, five years in Africa. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, then at the end of the 60s, I really felt that if you really wanted to do good mm -hmm. to for Africans and to Africa, mm -hmm. you, bet you better change trade structures. Interesting. You in the north. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So therefore, I came to the US, did international affairs at Columbia. That was another degree, or uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, so my divinity was first, mm -hmm. and then, <coughs> then I came to the U.S. I continued in international affairs at Columbia again. At Columbia, uh huh. Okay, uh huh. And um, because changing trade structures mm -hmm. is more, I felt more important mm -hmm. than simply giving charity or even. A religious development for Africans because often religious development will come along with economic and social development uh -huh. and so <coughs> that is now commonly accepted but at the end of the 60s it was not so yeah. that was not so yeah there were some people around talking that way and the Vedics have been talking for a long time that everything is interconnected mm -hmm. and that sort of thing but the, you came in you came to trade and economic issues in a certain sense. And then when did you first get uh, pick up on, as they say, 
the, uh, the question of, well, let's say global warming or of the environmental issues in, in a full force kind of way that you're, you're doing now? No. Very practically, I got involved as the founding chair of the ecology task force at the Riverside Church here okay. in Manhattan. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, we had a uh, national conference, was one of our major activities, mm -hmm. on religion and environment. And that was uh, 1990. 1990, we're getting closer into the present, yeah, yes. I see, yeah. And, um. and so, and based upon that, I was also involved with a group called the International, uh, uh, International Coordinating Committee for Religion and Earth. Okay. We uh. were, and so that was started also around the 1880s. Mm. And um, our aim was to bring the religious dimension mm -hmm. to, the Earth, to the Earth Summit in mm. Rio in 92, in mm. June 92. That brings us around perhaps to Mr. Maurice Strong. That's true. Who we both have an aberration of, and he's the one who started the Earth Charter movement, if I'm not mistaken. We're maybe jumping ahead a little bit. But he was calling attention to those ecological issues, and the, the Rio conference was a major one. No? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. I think it is really a milestone in the history of the Earth. I think so, too, And yeah. also the history of, of humanity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He and I, th was Michael, Mikhail Gorbachev involved, or was that later that they began to team up? No, that's interesting that you ask this. Mm -hmm. In uh, in 92, um, the, 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 UNCTA, the UN, is called the UNSET, mm. <laughs> the UN Conference on Energy and, Deve and Development, uh, failed to come up with a real Earth Charter, mm -hmm. a real set of principles that integrated social and ecological values. A very important vision statement. Exactly. That is called for, and it was and is still perhaps called for. Yeah. That's true. But uh -huh. so they came up mm -hmm. with, the, with the Rio principles, mm -hmm. which will really water down of uh, of the, the various earth covenants or the earth charters that mm -hmm. were floating around mm -hmm. and i was very much involved with the one of the earth covenant of the global education associates and i brought a uh, a tape along and maybe we might watch uh, it's about three to five minutes uh, about what the earth charter was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the earth covenant was because that was one of those that that floated around right. in Rio, mm -hmm. but the nations, they did not uh, accept this. Yes. They came up with those principles, mm -hmm. which became part of Agenda 21. Agenda, Agenda. 21, yeah. And mm -hmm. so coming back to your question, mm -hmm. Maurice Strong, mm -hmm. together with uh, Gorbachev, mm -hmm. with funding from the Dutch government. Really, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the Prime Minister, Ruth Lovers, was one of the three who really started the Earth Council mm -hmm. and the whole process of improving upon those Rio principles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, after five years of going to all the continents, having all kinds of dis disciplines yeah. involved, religion, science, and all kinds of group, social groups, they uh, came up with the benchmark charter okay. of, the, uh, of the Earth Charter. And so, you got something we might try and display. Oh, we'll just show this, that the print yeah. won't show. This is just a little thing which is, maybe you can give them the chance to come in on this, but this is the Earth Charter that I think Maurice Strong had a strong hand in helping to put together and other intellectuals saying that this is a vision statement for the Earth at a time of qualitative change. That's correct. And uh -huh. so it, but the really important thing is that mm -hmm. this was really a people's covenant. Mm -hmm enormous amount of work went into those five years to come up with this uh, benchmark. Yes. And so we had also a major meeting mm -hmm. in 97 because as okay, you know, every, every um, major UN conference yes. has a five-year review exactly, conference. Exactly, exactly. And okay. so also there, we really brought it again to the UN and mm -hmm. then it was brought again to the UN in Johannesburg. Help, help me a minute again. Uh, the, uh, the, the Rio was what year? 
92. June 92. 92. So you've got Mr. Clinton coming in, and uh, as far as the American administration and so forth. And then you also had Al Gore, who now has become a major figure in this field with his inconvenient truth and calling attention to global warming and the sustainability issues and all of that. That's now becoming a major issue in a way that was just being formed in a certain sense among some intellectuals and so forth at that time. So you could take some heart in the fact that there's a tension, but we can also be a little bit dismayed that our political or our business leaders haven't been able to follow as well as they might have Agenda 21 and the Earth, China, uh, Earth Charter no, that's prescriptions, that you bring prescriptions, you yeah, should say. Yeah. That's interesting that you bring this up mm. of uh, business and government mm -hmm. because that is also the uh, real challenge of of the Earth Charter that governments, business, and civil society yeah. consult and deliberate together because, yeah. and that is also what we are trying to do mm -hmm. with the summit in Octo on October 11. Yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, so this is so another, we've got another post here we'll put up and let them come in on that and you can talk to it. Go ahead, yeah, we're, sh so we're showing it now. So it's called the Earth Summit mm -hmm. uh, on climate crisis, and it takes place in New York City, October 11, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And what we are trying to do is to bring together government, business, and civil society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's very difficult to bring government and business together in on discussing something like Over that. the normal course of events, it's difficult, yeah. And so, but now, given that Mayor Bloomberg mm -hmm. came up with the plan NYC uh -huh, 2030, okay. the whole sustainability program, uh -huh. yeah. you see that is a golden opportunity f for government, for city government, mm -hmm. to be involved in this. And one of the things I did in Queens, where I reside in Eagle Park, Forest Hills, is to um, have a um, steering group uh, for Sustainable Queens 2030. And Are you looking ahead to the year 2030? Yeah, yeah, so like, okay. like Mayor Bloomberg's plan, uh -huh. which was launched in, de launched in December 06, mm -hmm. Sustainable Queens SQ or SQ 2030 mm -hmm. was launched about a year earlier. Okay. Uh -huh. And we had a representati representatives of government particularly people whom I had met during all kinds of meetings. Yes. And then I spoke up about the need of this con consultative process of government and business and civil society. It's very important, yeah. yeah. And so I got two important people from government to, to participate. In this conference coming up on the 11th? No, no, no. in, in oh. Sustainable Queens 2030. Oh, okay, so okay. Oh, I see. So You're that right. is the okay. effort, the earlier effort. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But what happens is, if it doesn't come from the top, if the mayor Bloomberg, if Mayor Bloomberg or his sustainability office doesn't really urge th the different departments to get locally involved, mm -hmm. then they are not s serious. No, they mm -hmm. are not serious. They or they're restrained by politics. Exactly. Or yeah, they are, right. Yeah. They are not willing, really. To uh, to do this and and to speak up, so I hope that du during this uh, summit mm -hmm. uh, on the 11th, that uh, we get several deputy commissioners to come. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because and then also with business leaders. So I'm I have my so I have the information all uh, up onto the internet. Good, yeah, and we'll let people know how they can get to that, yeah. Yeah, huh? so they, it's very yeah. simple. They can, given that the, um, the summit is taking place at Community Church. A wonderful place, yeah, yeah. On uh, 40, 40 East 35th Street. Mm -hmm. We also have, that is the first thing for people who are listening to this and yes, want right. to come. Mm -hmm. They can go to the website, which is CCNY, it is not City College of New York. Mm because ccny.org is the church, mm -hmm. ccny.edu is City yeah. College. Yes, but so the, the, the site for the event is ccny.org. Cc cc 
ccny.org. That's pretty easy. Everybody yeah, yeah. can remember that. ccny.org. And then we'll special have the information. events. We'll have, we'll have a link there. You might okay. look for special events when you get to there. And then they will have a notice about this event that you're organizing. And it's you're, you're, you're tuned into the Earth Charter movement. It's a movement that got started by Mr. Strong and others that has a lot of outreach around the country and the world, for that matter. That's correct. So it's tied into this larger organization of effort to try and get a sense of sustainability as an important issue for all the decision making and the people. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so the international movement is basically uh, supported, of course, by the national ones. Mm -hmm. And so www.earthcharterus.org mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is the one who is organizing the summits. Okay. So they uh, web stream mm -hmm. the 50 or so events that are taking place in the U.S. In real time? In real time. Okay, good, yeah. And also a couple outside of the U.S., in Canada, in the U.K., and even uh, two in Africa. There are the other charters opening up around the world other than just the United States. I guess it's mainly the oh United yeah, States. It's everywhere. Okay, it's good. It's everywhere. That's but encouraging, this, yeah. But this summit uh, approach, I think that's kind of uh, unique to the U.S. movement. Mm -hmm. Of course, the others will also have conferences, etc. Yeah. But what the intention is of the summit is to um, bring those three sectors of society of New York City together, mm. discussing about climate crisis, right. using the principles of the Earth Charter. Okay, that yeah. Earth Charter is obtainable by people who are viewing, if they might not be aware of it, they could go to a site where it's made available and displayed and everything in the language and so forth? Yeah, uh -huh. very simple, earthcharter.org, which is the international site, mm -hmm. Earth Charter US, dot org is the US is the US okay it's website. all one word E A R T H C H A R T E R dot org mm -hmm. and there they would be able to find the language that is made up of this Earth Charter that could be seen like we think of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights we can think of the Constitution of the United States of America the UN Charter these kind of this is something that would be good for people to be aware of as a major document for trying to lay out the vision by which we all might progress on into the future. Is that correct? You are making a very interesting connection. Okay. As the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 48 mm -hmm. was the major value statement of humanity for the 20th century. Thank you, Eleanor Roosevelt. Thank you. No. As the Magna Carta no. was the major value statement of Britain of 13th century Britain. That goes back a long time ago to those English across that ch ca channel from Of you. course. And you were in some dispute with them in a number of times over of that course. intervening history, but, but yes, we understand. But it's also, it's on the same level too, uh -huh. with the rights of men right, and humans France, and yeah. citizens uh -huh. of the French Revolution. Thank you, yeah. So we need these kind of documents and vision you see, statements, but don't we? Exactly, yeah. uh -huh. so that is humanity over the last 600, 700 years yeah. has progressed, and so the Earth Charter is, has uh, the same significance mm -hmm. as the ones, those charters you mentioned, and a couple of others that I added on. Yeah, it might be, because then I heard you say also you became interested in trade and matters economic, because that's really important and informs the political process, certainly, and the business process. And now we're going, we're talking, now what's the date today? It's the 19th of uh, September, and the, whole, the country is just being roiled tremendously by the financial problems of our financial industry. And there's going to be new institutions insti instigated or are going to be needed in order to shore up the system. So this is a shake, and we got a presidential election coming within about 50 days. So this is a time for major thinking about where in the world are we going? And if I'm not mistaken, when we did the program years ago with Mr. Strong, he had written a book, Where in the World Are We Going? Which was a very interesting title, so there's a lot of wisdom wrapped up in that we'd like to let people know. But the point being is, things are shaking up tremendously to where people are looking at things in a very large, comprehensive context now, at all levels. And you've been doing that for a long time, and this movement has, 
And so it's very apropos at this particular season to have one that takes all of that into account. And you're all gonna, we're all going to be getting together on the 11th of October uh, to consider some of these issues. And you're chairman and putting together of that, of that, organ of that, of that event. You see, and mm -hmm. the interesting and the value and the uniqueness of this summit mm -hmm. is not only of bringing together the three major societal sectors. Yeah, the government, business, and civil, civil society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also the informative and the practical part. Mm -hmm. In the morning, we have James Hansen. Oh, he is the number one man. He is yeah. the number one man. He's going to be your speaker in the morning. He is the keynoter in yeah, the morning. That's a major voice, yeah. He has uh, an hour and a quarter for his presentation, questions and answers. After that, we have a press conference with him. Mm -hmm. And then we also have uh, a workshop where Mayor Bloomberg's sustainability plan is being discussed. Okay. And also a declaration, uh, exactly what you were saying a minute ago. It's so important for people to have vision and to have an integrated set of social and ecological values. Absolutely, yeah. And so part of the summit is a declaration. And when people go to the ccny.org website mm -hmm. or to the Yahoo group. Now, is that declaration to be worked out? Or is it already written in stone? Has it come down on a tablet off a mountain? No, not has yet. It or, but it's being worked out by the people participating. It has come out All of right. my computer. Okay. And mm -hmm. it has uh, right. already traveled a little bit yeah, uh -huh. to the internet and also into our planning organization. Uh -huh. And uh, basically what we really like people to do, mm -hmm. I may have a copy now. Um, I'll put this over here. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. We, um, we really want people when they have when they register mm -hmm. to look at this declaration and discuss this. And at the end of the day, we really want to see to what extent people can agree with it or part partially agree with it. So there is a working document. There is a working document. Yes. That people can add to or addendum add to or something of that sort. But there's a working document no, that they could repair to. Yeah. That's also very interesting that you brought this up because. I didn't think about this, but um, at the end, one of the major objectives of the uh, of of the summit, besides this information and this practical application mm -hmm. to New York City in the afternoon, yes. of which we can talk later, with the mayor's office, yeah, um, is the the follow up. I think one of the things that basically we already decided that is going to happen is the establishment of the New York City Earth Charter Alliance. Oh, really? Uh, that would be at the governmental level? No. No. That yeah. would be, again... Civil society. Civil society. Right, good. Plus yeah. business. That's like us. Plus government. That, that's us in public access have large uh, elements of a civil society organization, so we're not into the normal political, corporate, dialectic that so much of the news and things are reported. There's representation from the civil society or the people. We have another graphic, you ladies and gentlemen. Okay, yeah, here so we go. Here, you in this graphic you see NYC Earth Charter Alliance. Okay. And we hope, we hope that at the end of the conference, mm -hmm. maybe 10%, maybe 20% of the people who are there mm -hmm. would want to say, Okay, I want to serve on one of the 12 task forces. Okay. We identified a dozen task forces. And this is, in a sense, laid out in a rough way. That is laid out in a rough way. Right. And also, basically, as you say, it is a working document. Yeah, a work in progress. In and a and work yeah. in progress. Yes, uh huh. But so, uh, the interesting vision also behind the Earth Charter US movement uh -huh. was uh -huh. we are going to have the follow up of the summit uh, supported on the internet with all kinds of other ways. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a self-sustaining part of a, of, an, of a group, of a movement, of an alliance 
that brings the ethical aspect. Ethical. Ethical aspect. You the did value a degree aspect. in divinity, didn't you? Huh? You did a degree in divinity. Of course. So they divinity usually has something to do with morals and ethics. Of I think, course, that's you. an yeah. important part right, of it. Right, right, right. Okay. And so, yeah. um, and, and and so this particular uh, alliance then would really study mm -hmm. and and apply the Earth Charter principles to business, mm -hmm. to energy, to, there is another task force, of course, for the next summit, for mm -hmm. next year. Have you got one in there about how to structure the American economy? Um, Which is, is, is all there is on the news today, as you and I do this program, is the need for a qualitative change in our whole economic system. Yeah, and particularly, I, I personally feel that um, the value system mm -hmm. up till now, yeah. not only in the US, but also to a great extent in Europe and in the whole international development community, because I'm quite involved in that one, yes. is growth, 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 and forget about equity. Well, the equity, yeah, the questions have been given short shrift, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, one of the, uh, if I have to identify the difference between uh, McCain, uh, McCain and Obama mm -hmm. in terms of their economic policies, mm -hmm. then the first one, McCain, really stands for growth and of course also a little bit of equity. Mm -hmm. But Obama really says what we really have to do in order to make this economy going, mm -hmm. so simply technically and economically, mm -hmm. is really give a fair shake to all people. Mm. And to so all people, to yeah. To all people, mm -hmm. and not to a privileged few. Mm -hmm. And so there, he has a far greater emphasis on equity, mm -hmm. and that's important. And also, given that the show also will go on the internet, I would also like to make the following point. In terms of international development, mm -hmm. people, um, first of all, feel growth growth, growth on the way the industrialized nations have gone. And then equity will come later. And China's going. Yeah. A large player, yeah. And so where are presently most of the new billionaires, mm -hmm. billionaires, mm -hmm. not millionaires. With a B. With a B. Mm -hmm. In India and in China. Mm -hmm. So, and in Russia. Mm -hmm. So in these countries, what is happening is, what has happened also here, you had the rubber barons and, and all of that. Gilded age. Gilded yeah. age. Yeah, huh? And so now, th this economy is still part of all of this. Of course, yeah. If we get the chairperson of uh, Lehman Brothers, mm. $500 million mm -hmm. over 10 years, I think, I mean to say, an economic system like that is simply economically, socially, aesthetically, uh, religiously, Unsustainable. I was going to say unsustainability is your keyword here. Exactly. Yeah, it won't be. Yeah. Okay. And so what yeah. we, particularly with the ecological questions rolled into consideration. Yeah. And and so what we really want to to emphasize is this alliance. And so there is a new uh, Yahoo group mm -hmm. with the various uh, background and working papers, which is simply called. Uh, <coughs> So if people go to yahoo, uh, yahoo.com and to groups, mm. then they can uh, search for NICE call, N-Y-C-E, NICE mm -hmm. call, C-A-L-L. Okay. And you can see that it's also at the end, I think, of the credits. Uh -huh. I think it might have been put also up there, I don't know. Okay. At yeah. any rate, mm -hmm. uh, on this, Yahoo group nice call, mm -hmm. so it can <laughs> instead of nice written yeah. N I C E, uh. it is N Y C. I, n I get you, yeah. And then that's, that's New York City, mm -hmm. and then E C mm -hmm. is Earth Charter, and A L is Alliance. Uh -huh. So nice call. Yeah. Is the is the is the alliance where we really hope. It's good to remember things that way, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So okay. you can easily yeah. talk about right. nice call. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So. We really feel that is so important with the follow-up. Mm -hmm. Even if the registration may not 
be that great, mm -hmm. notwithstanding our great efforts, mm -hmm. because this is a kind of unique way of doing it. I also applied to C-SPAN. Maybe they might cover it if they really That'd see. That'd be marvelous if Brian Lamb could get somebody to cover it. Yeah, they might. Yeah. You got a call into them. Yeah, it would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. would be. But you are the first one. They're likely to be at the Federal Reserve Board and all these talks about economics that are going to be roiling things for the next the week or so. I yeah, think, but, but you see, it could be October 11 anyway. Yeah, so that's true. Well, maybe, maybe by October 11 they can get they around to the real important stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> when we talk right. climate crisis, right. we can talk about the economy mm -hmm. and et cetera. That's right. Because but if we don't put it in the context of the climate crisis mm -hmm. and what that means for the U.S. and yeah. for the world, uh -huh. We are still missing the boat. Yeah, that, 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 that's all very good. And what we're looking for really is a comprehensive understanding of what's going on and in a certain sense, in a pattern way, a vision statement that can incorporate the, the real challenges confronting the whole of humanity within a systems understanding, the whole system, and that system within an ecological context. So it's a very large vision that is calling is called for now, and your 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 efforts here on the 11th are moving toward that with but the backing of Mr. Strong. But I would not so even on. say ecological context. Yeah. I would a, uh, a larger context in the larger context yeah. of the climate crisis. Right, that's another incorporating thing, and that within the economic problems you see and most the political people, is yeah. all included, and uh, all of these things are included in a way. Uh, uh, is your movement, or Mr. Strong, I think we did that program with him. I liked him very much. He was a good man. The book was really good. Where on Earth Are We Going was the title of the book, which yeah. was a very interesting one. But he was very Im inspired and had been inspired by paradigms, by large systems thinking. And he had also been inspired by somebody I'm inspired by, Bucky Fuller. They had a marvelous exhibit that was there. He had the world game, and they were working these things out. Are, are the people in the Earth Charter movement, as it were, and it's very large and growing, uh, aware of, uh, of Dr. Fuller or Buckminster Fuller as somebody who is a comprehensive visionary thinker that, uh, or not. I just added yeah. it as an aside. He had that world game where they worked out a lot of the kind of things you're dealing with based on human population trends, new materials, what's going on technologically and all that kind of uh, thing, new developments. And I wonder you what are the, some of the sources that W that Mr. Strong and the Earth Charter, Agenda 21, and these movements toward a vision of what in the world's going on go to at a comprehensive level to get an understanding. Who are some of the people that inspire from out of history or in the recent history uh, that movement? Because there's been a great deal. Uh, there are a great number of people who've been inspirational to that search for a vision of understanding things at a very comprehensive level. The uh the major people in, in science, be it cosmology, be it astronomy, mm -hmm. be it in social and physical sciences, mm -hmm. are included. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty of this. Yeah. You see, if real religious and ethical considerations mm -hmm. depend upon a close understanding of reality. Mm -hmm. Right. You the reality is a very many splendid thing and a lot of different interpretations of what about reality is the real reality as opposed to the fake reality by those people over there who are trying to outdo us in a political for dominating the world. You understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, <coughs> take it for example the climate crisis. Right. You really have to know what's happening there in order to make a proper ethical statement well, on Mr. this. Well, Mr. Henson knows that pretty well, doesn't he? Yeah, he is more a, s a technical scientist, yeah. climatologist. Right, right. But there is a whole uh, there is a whole um, science coming up. Okay. About another book to display, right? About okay. the ethics. Okay. Yeah, of the ethics of the, are of very the climate important. crisis. Yes, right. And so here, mm -hmm. you have American heat, ethical problems with the United States response to global warming. Okay. By Big Don issue, yeah. By Donald Brown. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No, Donald Brown? Yeah, but, uh, probably it's not the Donald Brown the you might think No, there was another of. Brown. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And um, so the question, of course, people will understand that there is ethics involved in terms of paying for mitigating 
climate crisis and also adjusting to it. Mm -hmm. But also the whole issue of, time, of yeah. setting yeah. targets. Uh -huh. Right, right. Is also a very, a very ethical issue. Of course it's ethical, yeah. Because the very fact that you are deciding something without involvement of the affected people, i.e. The folks. The, the folks yeah. in, Af in the north and in the south, the global north and south, shows that there would be a lack of procedural justice. Mm -hmm. and so We're that trying. Rights of man, UN Charter, there's some progress that's going. The body of international law is growing. It used to be just realpolitik, dog eat dog, whoever's got the power, they can do what they want, and everyone else must do what they must by the dictates of those few who have the power, that sort of thing. That's what we're coming out of. James Joyce called history a nightmare mm -hmm. from which we're attempting to awaken. And perhaps we are awakening to a new liberated order of the whole system, including all the people, rather than just a few leadership plutocratic people who traditionally have been at the, uh, the head of governments and uh, major institutions and run things, whether from the Versailles pra palaces of 1789 or whatever. But history has been a matter of a few being at the top and most of the people having to do what those few people tell them to do in a way that isn't really democratic or all involving in the ecological sense that you're attempting to bring into focus as a possibility that may be before us. You see? Yeah? So Demo like a real democracy. Yeah, that's real yeah. democracy. Yeah. And that is, part of, that is part of the Earth Charter. Yes. The Earth Charter has about uh, four major um, Categories of values. So the first one. Yeah, yeah but you see, we're not going to be able to come in tight focus on this. No, very no, well but I will, I will see. Yeah, yeah, you better just them. spell them. They're here. This is the Earth. And this is available again on the Internet. At in all languages. At all languages of the world. Earth you got Charter. all the languages in the world? Yeah, I, I have not counted them at There's 189, or no, there's about 5,000 languages. Okay. Probably. But anyway, I understand what you're saying. And so. Um, so those values mm -hmm. are respect and care for the, for the community of life. So rather than thinking right, of, I'll about, close this. They can't about, read that the, fine about the human community, yes. we really start talking about community of right. life. Uh -huh. That's one of the major kind of thing. You mm -hmm. expand people's vision of only an anthropocentric, anthropocentric focus to a biocentric or community of life focus. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about that this kind of vision of more democracy, et cetera, yes, democracy too, but also this whole issue of social, procedural justice, um, even nonviolence, and all of these values, they are coming into play. And I call them, so my main uh, concept of sustainability is yeah. contextual sustainability. Okay, yeah. And what that means is ecological sustainability, because most people, when they talk about sustainability, they think about ecological sustainability. Yes, that is important. Yeah. That's important, yeah. but that's only one part of it. Yeah, right. There's you also have also economic sustainability right. and social sustainability. Yeah, and even political sustainability. That is also true. Might that's also social. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, by um, integrating them, you get a kind a, a sustainability vision that is based upon values. Okay. You put them in the context of values. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that is emerging. I think one of the most interesting and readable books, which I don't <laughs> have with me, but wouldn't you know? <laughs> it's all right. You can't get all of them. No, yeah. no. Is is the mm. book called the sustainable the sustainability revolution? It's a sustainable sustainability revolution? Yes, a okay. portrait of a paradigm shift. Okay, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, paradigm is... Uh, by by a, a gentleman called uh, Edwards in California mm -hmm. who uh, put, who, who really shows uh, on the various levels how this thinking is coming around. And I think what our major challenge, uh, uh, not only of the Earth Charter, but of societies, mm -hmm. is really to go 
fully and commit themselves to this sustainabil sustainability revolution, mm -hmm. which is basically the successor of the industrial revolution, mm -hmm. which goes back, of course, to the agriculture revolution. Mm -hmm. Neolithic, so, yeah. Uh, so yes, the mm -hmm. Neolithic. Mm -hmm. So in that way, you see that we are at, at the cusp I wonder of if we could. Uh, the cusp yeah. of, of major visionary change. Thank you, major visionary major. change. Did it encompass all of that? And I, I've done programs, Franz, uh, here we go, we're 200,000 years, we're here, uh, Homo sapien, 10,000 generations, and we have a unique capability of uh, affecting the environment through technology. Most creatures can affect it very minimally. Beavers make dams and birds make nests, but mm -hmm. we really can intervene. And we extend our consciousness through technology. And a good deal of that has been led by uh, research supported by weaponry concerns by leaders. And we now have weapon systems that if they were to be unleashed in a spasm of hatred that we tribally have experienced against one another with alarming regularity throughout history, uh, that apparently they tell us from the modeling, it can't be done anything other than modeling, but it's uh, that if those weapon systems that exist, not only the thermal, uh, hydrogen, and nuclear, and, uh, and so forth, but some weapon systems that have come out of strategic defense initiative and so forth, uh, uh, germ warfare, things along the line of germ warfare, the research has been going on, that if they were unleashed as they have been, like say in the Second War, uh, it would apparently mean from the modeling that every single human being would be wiped out, eliminated, by, by that, something we couldn't do as recently as the Second World War. That's an existentially new, tremendously powerful capability that we have that fortunately we've been impotent to try as best we could to kill the other people, I mean, in war. But there must be something on the adverse side of that in a yin-yang ethical context or spiritual context or comprehensive understanding of events on the other side of that and it might be that uh, we, we have, an un we have a, just a, a bountiless capability of providing with the technological capabilities, nanotechnology, doing more with less, um, things coming out of the computer revolution where things become smaller, more powerful all the time, that we may be able to provide for people in a way, uh, we have a capability, that has not been characteristic of history that is equally significant on the living side. And it's in search of finding that living possibility that I think all of this effort is in the vision of, and it may be we're at a time of a qualitative transformation in our relationship to the cosmos in a species evolutionary sense, a liberation. Uh, do you see things in that kind of a context, or can you see this like we've been gestating for 200,000 years and we're going to have liberation of the real total potentiality of humanity and the ecology within connection with that in a way that we haven't been able to have tech, uh, historically and that it would be like we're coming to the end of a gestation and we're going to come into a new relationship. Maybe, I don't know if you've ever gotten into Hardy Chardin, this notion of an omega point, that we're coming to a point. There is a point sometime in the evolution of consciousness where we will transcend that which we've been in throughout the human experience. Are we at a moment of birth of like a liberation and a liberated order for all peoples within an ecological context that is the adverse side? And is this economic shakeup that we're going through now maybe signaling where we're going to be forced to bring in the institutions. They're going to let us realize the full potentiality is there, capable on the living side that has not been historically available. Are we at a time of qualitative transformation, the evolution of even things cosmically or un in terms of universal evolutionary patterns? Or is that reaching too far for the context within which we can try to consider these things? If well, you can understand I don't think all so. that. I don't mm. think so. I, th I, I think the kind of gestation period you are talking about is, um, it is, is bringing forth this kind of signs of a sustainability revolution which encompasses many of the things uh, you were talking about. 
And I'm particularly thinking, mm. for instance, of the work of uh, Thomas Berry. Okay, yes, beautiful, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. Thayer, yeah. who is one of the major interpreters of Teilhard de Chardin. Chardin and was major, yeah. Uh, yeah. With yeah. Omega Point, etc. Yeah, Phenomena Man, yeah. But he and Brian Swimmer, mm -hmm. they um, have this kind of uh, view of the cosmos and how we are transitioning mm -hmm. into a period mm -hmm. he calls it the ecozoic period ecozoic yeah okay so yeah, that means yeah. mm -hmm. where this is barry you're talking about yeah, yeah okay, and yeah. also swimming yeah. but also yeah. other people too yeah where where really the ecosystem the well-being of the planet mm -hmm. or the community of life yeah right that's your values again yeah, yeah right, right. is placed central mm -hmm. You see, and that mm. is also with, with our present economic system. Mm -hmm. um, I already made the point, my first point was that, it, uh, that we really have to see in the larger context of climate crisis. Secondly, we, c we really have to see it globally, mm -hmm. and particularly in the US, that which is so important in the global, in the global uh, context. But we also have to uh, see it in terms of uh, values, in terms of equity. And so if you build up an economic system that really increases the gap between people, particularly rich and poor, mm -hmm. as the present international economic system does. Uh, thank you, that's true. Which mm -hmm. impoverishes the many, mm -hmm enriches the few. Mm -hmm. As it has throughout most all of human history. And yeah. on top of that endangers the planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you see that this is the system that we are living with, mm -hmm. and which basically also reflects in some ways, not in every, in every society, but in quite a few societies, um, then we see the enormous challenge. And mm -hmm. I think, um, one of the you got another thing no 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 oh, no oh, i think from the charter okay yeah yeah i think Earth it's charter. so beautif beautifully uh, said at the end of the Earth charter when when it talks about the way forward mm -hmm. it says okay read the time, words you can read without glasses yeah good most for of you the time. okay good. let ours be a time remembered for the awakening of a new reference for life the firm resolve to achieve sustainability, the quickening of the struggle for justice and peace, and the joyful celebration of life. Wonderful, I like that term quickening. I think there's a quickening in a pregnancy. There's a quickening and the water breaks and it's got a certain gestation period and we may be at that period now of a breakthrough and it may be challenging us in a major way there may be other systems out there in the universe that get to a similar point simply can't make the liberate, liberating transformation required of the cosmos for them to achieve their purpose and they would just entropy or go into chaos and uh, that's what I'm saying I like that term that we are because it's amazing I suppose people in the 10th century said isn't this an amazing time but this truly is an amazing time as we oh, sit yeah. and talk and, and incredibly challenging to get over ancient hatreds and that kind of thing. That and is all true. It's, it, but it's great to be alive, but it's very disconcerting because there's so many changes going on that's so true. fast. That yes. is true. And probably things will even get worse before they get better. Well, okay. Hard yes. labor, is that another labor? Is that an that's hard labor? That's another analogy we could put to a pregnancy coming full term of this human uh, saga here on earth if you I'm trying to reach for large metaphors you, yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, I you see. understand yeah right yeah and so um, this challenge particularly the whole economic system mm -hmm. both in the US and also abroad mm -hmm. if the the values mm -hmm. of the Earth Charter mm -hmm. were to be applied, mm -hmm. then we would have a good kind of vision where things have to go. And so things may get worse 
But if you know where to go, mm -hmm. if, if you have a kind of roadmap that you say, yes, there is where we have to go and this is the process. Mm -hmm. Often the process is more important than the product itself. I think both. You want to have things so that they can know what it is that you're doing. There's an old Scot, I'm from Scottish background to yeah. a degree and everything. Yeah. There's an old Scottish song. Could I sing it to you? It goes like this. It goes, we don't know where we're going, but we're on our way. We don't know where we're going, but we're here to say. Lidle, didle, didle, deedle, die, I, a. We <laughs> don't know where we're going, but we're on our way. So we may be, you know, there's going to be a period of not being absolutely certain because we won't know. If you're inside the womb of a birth to come, you can't know what it is outside the womb as much as you might try to project. Yeah, that's it goes through, but all there's metaphors are limited. All right, all metaphors are limited. <laughs> and right. and, and so listen, we have a piece of tape. You want to get that into this program, don't we? Yeah. That what do you think? Uh, well, how, how much time? We do got we about uh, we got about seven minutes. So do you want to put try and get well, it in or well let it go? Oh, no, let, it's basically about the Earth Covenant. Okay. Let me say what. Okay. And this was started in 1988. Okay. And as a matter of fact, as I mentioned to you, I mm. produced on public access for 12 years yes, sir. at Queen's Public Television. Yes, you did indeed. The Fundamentals of Environmentalism. Yes, And my Good second show yeah. Yeah. in 1989 yeah. was the Earth Covenant. Okay. And the Earth Covenant is the kind of precursor to the Earth Charter. Yes. And the two of them are really similar. Uh -huh. And so that gave a little bit of history about the Earth Covenant. But what I really, in the last couple of minutes, that I really would like to also to emphasize yes. is the importance of, of education. Mm -hmm. But then you have to say, what kind of education? And so <coughs> one of the major things that I'm doing as a sustainability sociologist. Sustainability soci That, for all you young people viewing, that's something you might aspire to, a sustainability sociologist. So right. it's not only yeah. ecological. You yeah. see, you have an ecological sociologist, and, yeah. and environmental sociology yeah. has been around for the last 30 years. Has it really? Oh, yeah, yeah. environmental sociology, who, but who, not... Who's the voice, who's the founding voice of sociology? Butel and, and, and Cla yeah. Radcliffe and so many people. Okay, okay. And but I would sustainability. Say Fuller. I would say Fuller. I'd want to get Fuller. Yeah. Right okay. Here. And Charlie. Uh, and, and you have McLuhan and James Joyce. And there's a bunch. Yeah. So you have all of the, all of that environmental sociologists, environmental lawyers, mm. environmental <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Environmental econo economics. Yeah. But now sustainability. Yeah. Sociologists and also the other professions mm -hmm. is they combine economics, uh, so social economics and environmental. Mm -hmm. And so one of the works that I do as, mm. as a director of research on social and ecological education on the integration of both mm -hmm. is uh, <coughs> working in an organization called Earth and Peace Education Associates. Okay. And one of my associates uh, had an anthology which is called Educating for a culture of social and ecological peace. Okay, you said, uh, you said uh, I thought you said ontology, but you said anthology. Anthology. Anthology is important. And, too. and so, for instance, book, also in yeah. chapter two, I have yeah. a chapter in there yeah. about contextual sustainability. Okay. And also, there are two chapters on the Earth Charter. Okay. And so, for educators, mm -hmm. this book, I think, is really uh, eye opening. Mm -hmm. And when the SUNY Press, which is one of the outstanding and most advanced presses in the U.S., uh -huh. got the proposal, uh -huh. they said, we have been waiting for this book. Oh, wonderful. That's why I used to teach with SUNY uh, upstate and everything. That's really, that's really very, and very so good. And so it's so important mm -hmm. that when we talk about values education, yes. that we really have to say what kind of values. Uh -huh. Not yes. only moral values uh -huh. from humans, human uh -huh. values, but also human earth and really integrate both of them. Yeah, it's a whole system. It's a whole system. Yeah. And so rather than having a anthropocentric yeah, yeah. vision. Uh, a what? A anthropo yeah. anthropocentric vision. Can you, you go to 
a biocentric one. Uh -huh. So anthropos an anthropocentric mm -hmm. means anthropos, the human being, yeah. is in the center. There's a lot of us tending to do that, aren't there? Of course. Yeah, that's right. But the main challenge, and yeah. what we have been talking about, is yes. the yeah. period, yeah. is from humanity to start realizing yeah. that they are members of the community of life. Thank you very much. We did a really good program with Robert Shapiro who brought us the best science about how life got started 3.7 billion years ago. It's been evolutionary all along and it's all one system. And, it, and they got that fire in that up at CERN now over there, that, uh, that collider that's going to get back to, uh, you know, the beginning of the universe 13.78 billion years ago. And so it's all one system, and so we're coming to that. And what you're doing is very important. I did want to get in quickly here before the program. This is going to be on Tuesday, uh, whatever next Tuesday is. I'm not sure, the 22nd, I think, of... Uh, of, uh, yeah. of, uh, of September. And tomorrow, Wednesday, we have a program we did about 10 years ago with Maurice Strong, who was the inspiration for the Earth Charter. So I just want to let them know they're doing that. And then also... Oh, that's the interesting. I, mm -hmm. I, I watched, I watched uh, the uh, video part of the, the program. Yeah, we've got it up on YouTube now. Yeah. And I'm very encouraged because YouTube is like an educational thing, isn't it? Yeah. And the whole public access system is educational. And you're talking about the importance of education. Multimedia education is important. And so it's a, it's a, there's opportunities for that that are presented by this system in which you and I are talking now, which is part of the evolution of consciousness and of technology. And so it's all coming together in a, in a, in a very, very interesting way as you and I sit here and talk on the 19th of September of the year 2008, is it not? That's true. Right. And we and go I forward to October 11th for your conference. That's true. Mm. But I would like to conclude. Yes, sir. We've got about a minute left, so get it down to haiku now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I s again would like to emphasize mm -hmm. <coughs> the real importance of the ethical dimension mm -hmm. of climate change. And therefore, when you s talk about climate crisis, mm -hmm. people are really forced mm -hmm. to think crisis. They they know technology is part of it, mm -hmm. but then you can also push forward to the ethical and the spiritual part. Yeah, right. Because in the last instance, and I'm quoting here uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Oh, yes. Which says, action mm -hmm. does not spring from information, but a readiness, a readiness for responsibility. Wow, okay. Yeah. I think that's so a true. A readiness for responsibility. We all ought to wake up to that. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And the more people can shoulder responsibility and be ready mm -hmm. to live as members of the community of life, mm -hmm. the faster we will be able to come to that beautiful ending of the Earth Charter. All right, very good. Well, thank you. Well, if anybody's been stepping up to that responsibility yourself, I thank you for such a very, very well-led life. Thank and you. And for all the work that you've done, and it's going to be culminated, at least in this phase, at this event on the 11th of uh, October, we let its people know. Thank you very much for viewing. It's your pleasure to have been a major voice for sustainabil sustainability sociologists, which is a great title <laughs> and so forth. And uh, it's been your pleasure to have his perceptions. Thank you. We're coming back again tomorrow. It'll be Maurice Strong tomorrow talking about his book, Where in the World Are We Going? Very and so important. we I invite you to tune in for that tomorrow. Franz, thanks a lot for coming. Harold, great it pleasure. was a pleasure. Okay. Good to see you. Okay. So I guess. Okay. Thanks. That's a wrap. Will you stop talking now, Frank?